Okay, no love. Hi, oh. everybody. Hi. Welcome to tea with Phil and Jen. Mm -hmm. It's April 1st. You see and behind us snowed. lots of snow. Right. And we got some snow last night. So anyway, we're not uh, in a great mood. But, really grouchy uh, but we'd like to thank you guys for sending us pictures of your uh, cherry, cherry blossoms. blossoms and all of those beautiful spring pictures we're seeing. Thank you. We're going to have some tea that we had before. Not so good, but since it's a grouchy day for us, we're going to continue the mood. Yeah, so, so we're going to go inside because it's a little bit cold out here. We're freezing. Right. And uh, we're going to have those teas. It's a great chance for you to learn something about teas that aren't so good because we're going to be really honest and grouchy. Yeah. Hope you enjoy the video. Yeah. And see you inside. So today we're going to brew two teas. The first one is a Taiwanese Wulong from Jade Mountain and the second one is the um, Old Bush Shui Xian quote unquote a uh, hundred year old bush So uh, I'm planning to do the Wulong first because we had both teas before and uh, uh, even though the second one I don't think it's very good it's still like worth drinking while the first one basically I'm going to dump it right after we had these ones before, so we have a little bit of a preview. So let's get on the brewing. So while Jen is brewing here, I just want to take a second and point out our brewing setup for this session. I want to point it out because it's a pretty simple setup. We basically simply have a placemat, the guy on the serving pot in our cups, and a little wastewater bowl off to the side. Don't need a fancy tea table, don't need a bunch of fancy stuff. Uh, sometimes I think Gong Fu brewing can be a little daunting for people, so I wanted to make note of uh, of the simple of how simple the setup can be. So uh, we're not going to talk too much about the brewing. If you are interested in uh, Wulong brewing instructions, we have videos about water temperature and how much leaves to put. You can check the video links below as well as the information bar. All right, cheers. Cheers. So when we first had this tea, we uh, brewed and used the regular water, which is tap water uh, after filter with the uh, Brita. Yeah. And this time we use a uh, Wakefield water, which is a spring water. Local spring. Right. And I feel like it's a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Like the taste actually improved as well as the aroma. It's more drinkable now. Yeah. Oops. Definitely a little thin. Yeah. So let me just brew this a little bit more so the leaves are fully open. And I'll show you why I really don't like this. But before the nasty version, let's listen to a more friendly version of how uh, this tea could sure be thing. described. I'll have another uh, yeah. sip of it to refresh my memory. So it has an interesting aroma, not really in your face, but definitely present. Sort of like a, an evergreen meadow. Still pretty floral, I think. Yeah, it's a not little bit of floral, so vegetal, but... a hint of bite, not an aggressive bite. And a little bit of... A, that fragrance is coming through in the flavor a little bit. Yeah, it's a it's a reasonably flavorful tea, uh, not overwhelming, but present. Uh, quite uh, quite drinkable, um, and there's a but there's some elements missing from it. Another perspective. The, mm -hmm. the spring water really did um, improve that improve a lot. Because yeah. I remember when we first brew it, I brew that once and just dumped the whole thing. We didn't even, I I didn't even finish one cup. I had one sip and that's it. Mm. <laughs> okay. Mm. 
the brood leaf is really not different sizes, but some are quite open, some are still really uh, like has the curl, seem to be, um, mm -hmm. they seem to need a little bit longer brewing and stuff. But yep. this is kind of like a, a hint of how different tenderness of the leaf, right? right? Some are older, older ones unroll faster, some are more tender mm -hmm. and unroll a little bit slower and it's really green. Like, and the edges are really just uh, messy. Tattered. Yes. Right? Yes. Uh, it's just, a, for me, it's processed. The process isn't so good. The quality is not bad of the raw material, but I just feel like uh, when you process that, it's just, uh, you know, get that uh, shake a little bit. Mm -hmm. Don't really care how much it oxidizes, no. how much the floral, uh, the uh, aroma comes out, and use the machine to really press that good. That's why the dry leaves look seem to be pretty like unified, uni, uniform, unified, uniform. uniform. Like yeah. looks pretty good when it's uh, yeah. Yeah. dry, but once it's brewed, it's pretty messy. Right. I think we just um, met this uh, producer, and when we got the samples, it's uh, you know they tell us they have been processing. Their family has a long history, like over a hundred years. That's right, yeah of processing oolong and stuff which make me uh, still make me feel hopeful that there might be some good ones and we were pretty specific that I'm looking for something more traditional authentic good taste not just a light aroma stuff but uh, this is uh, the uh, one of the samples that uh, one of the samples that we got and uh, it's quote unquote higher quality right mm -hmm. and, yes and uh, if somebody called this a higher quality, I don't think the I would pursue the producer to ask for better teas and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So shall we head over to Rock Tea Land? All right. So we're back for the second tea. We've got a fresh pot of freshly boiled water, and we realized one of the reasons that the. Uh, that the Taiwanese oolong probably came off a lot better this time around is that when we assess tea, we always use boiling water mm -hmm. for oolong tea. And this time, uh, we had let the kettle sit for quite a time. So it was brewed in uh, below boiling water. And actually, you know, that, that's something we've talked about before, right? That uh, water temperature is a, somewhat an indicator of quality. You know, mm -hmm. if you want the best out of the tea, definitely follow the manufacturer's brewing instructions. But when you assess tea, for my money, use boiling water. You're going to get the real pitcher. Right, right. So now it's time for our rock tea. Yes. Rock tea. My favorite category and my favorite uh, cultivar, Shui Xian. Yeah. A lot of times you will hear that uh, we say it's a hundred year old bush or stuff. In Chinese, we have a history of using number just vaguely means it's really old. Like in old literature, you will find three or nine. Those numbers are actual numbers, but it actually means it's just a lot. Uh, so uh, when it's a hundred year old bush, if you see Chinese, it doesn't mean it's actually 100 years. Right. It's just a, it's a really old bush. Mm -hmm. Wasn't planted in 1917 precisely. It's just old, in case you didn't get that. Here we go. Let's hit it. Cheers. Yes. You know, every time I have this tea, there's a big why in my brain. Like, why you do that? That's a, such a great material. Like, a, a, it's not 100 year old, but it's definitely decades. Like, a, it has a really strong, that woody... It's old that, bush. Yeah, old bush flavor. That specific, like, not seaweed, like, but it's a little bit like a seawater, a little bit like a seaweed, not so strong. Thicker but, mouth feel. Yes, that uniqueness is definitely an old bush, but why you make that so light? Mm -hmm. You know, it's not a brewing kind of light, it's the whole process emphasizes only aroma rather than mouthfeel. It's like, right. a, you know, it's like 
you pay twenty uh, two hundred dollars on a really expensive tea and you brew that with fifty degree water. It's just a waste. It won't ruin it, but why? Yeah. Yeah, and it had a nice aroma on the liquor. Uh, it's got a nice bottom cup and and the malt feel is like as you were saying, it's incomplete. It's got some of the elements, but it's got a lot. Uh, lightly oxidized, lightly roasted. Awesome. Kind of a shame. Yeah. And it's quite interesting how I met this uh, producer. Because when I was in Wee area, we got in from the very back of that reserved park uh, with our uh, producers. So uh, we went in with all the, uh, how do you say, pluckers? Like those, oh okay. The you were on the bus with the uh, with the basically the yeah. crew. Yeah. So gonna basically the team. we uh, yeah we okay. just uh, came okay. in the uh, reserve without paying the ticket, and uh, and you took a back road. Yes, totally back road. There's no sign. There's no road. Don't ask. We're not allowed to tell. <laughs> yeah, and we we got in and we got lost. There's no GPS. There's no signal, and I don't know where to go, and the. Uh, the direction we got from farmers were just like you go this way and you turn left, and then you turn mm -hmm. right and you see a big rock, then you turn see, left. Chinese directions are similar to how they age the tea. Hundred years, you know, like that. Yeah. Go right, go left, go left. You see yeah. a tree, turn left. Yeah, and it was really hot. No, we didn't bring water. We didn't know it would happen or anything. And I was like, oh my god, I'm going to die here. It's just a, as a city girl, I get really panic when I don't see people around. I feel really insecure. Then, like, so our strategy is stick with the uh, tea farms. Like, where there's tea farms, it's more likely to have people, even though that was at the end of the plucking season. So, eventually, we heard somebody talk. And this isn't just you, this is a whole busload of pluckers. No, 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 no. We, we visited the uh, area. The, okay. the okay. quote unquote farm. Then me and my mom okay. just went Ventured off road out. to see something else. And uh, yeah, then I, we found, uh, we finally heard somebody talking and was like, oh my God. And that was the producer I met. That was her last day plucking in the reserve, like we call Zhenyan, the authentic area. So you were on foot wandering around. Yeah. After arriving at the farm, the pluckers and the producer go their own way, and you guys yeah. wander out into the woods and get lost on yeah. a hot day with no water. Yeah. Okay. And I think everybody gets it now. Oops. And then you met this producer. She walks up in the middle of the woods mm -hmm. and basically saves you. Yeah, yeah. So we just, uh, you know, they kind of uh, help us to get to the region where there are signs and there are people. <laughs> wow. Anyway. What a chance meeting. So to me, they have really great feel. They have a great material yeah. in the uh, authentic area. That's why we uh, like uh, sample some from her, and um, yeah, I'm really sad. I really feel bad that there are such a good uh, the material is so good while the pro user cho uh, choose to go the lighter side mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I I can tell you how this tea would happen is you have this like this really aromatic when it's freshly uh, produced you drink that oh my god this is so there good go. the aroma mm -hmm. the everything seemed to be so good after six months or even a year the aroma goes away I don't know if you noticed when we first it had was that. big Yes, it was it really splashy. You just brew it. You guys have had that where you brew a rock tea and boom, you have that uh, explosive fragrance in the room. It's very delightful, but it's not necessarily an indicator of a great tea. Uh, it's just giving everything up, and that's related to the process, right? This light style process. Yeah. Then it just uh, dies down. So some people were like, you know what? I can roast it at home. Lots of people do that, yeah. but roasting is not so easy. And it really shouldn't be required of a good tea, right? Yeah, first a good tea doesn't need that. The ideal situation with roasting is the old teas doesn't taste old. The new roasted tea doesn't taste as fresh and new roasted. When people say, oh, this tea needs like three months or six months to settle, it's the roasting process is not perfect, mm -hmm. but it can be good. Yeah. But when you roast it, like the tea, you cannot just roast and roast and roast it. Eventually, all the substance, the good thing goes right. away. Everything becomes empty, right? And you're just, yeah, and we've had teas like that where you drink it and you're like, 
it's all that's left is roasting flavor. Yeah. And the tea is actually a small or an absent element, which mm -hmm. is you know not what you're looking for. Right. And if you roast it a little bit big, it's over roasted. Mm -hmm. Let it sit for a couple of months can help uh, help with the uh, whole aroma to be lighter, right. but it cannot do the damage. Exactly. The leaves are wrapped. Mm -hmm. So okay. So here's to the producers that know how to roast like rock stars. <laughs> rock tea stars. <laughs> Sorry, that was awful. Yeah. But anyway, I was still drinking this tea. This is still a really good tea. Mm -hmm. Oh, and another thing is the price tag. Oh yeah. This price tag is over an over five thousand, uh, almost a ten thousand yuan. Which let me do the translation. It's about for a jing, right? For a jing, which is like uh, uh, like a, around seventy dollars for fifty grand wholesale price. Wholesale price. So yeah, definitely not. So I was like, if I pay them money, it's better be, uh, you know, yeah. not your socks squad. bring off. Yeah, right? and it doesn't just go bad, not go bad, but doesn't really lose the yeah. quality after three months. Yeah, I was going to mention about uh, aged oolong. We have a couple in our ca catalog, and that's another thing. When we age oolong, that that for us that implies it's not re roasted. We age oolong yeah. doesn't need that. Yeah. So if you see an aged oolong, that's a, I think that's a fair question if you're not sure. In our for our part, uh, our Ijiao and our aged Taiwanese, we don't re roast that because it shouldn't require. It. Yeah, and our Ijiao is like a 2002. It's 15 yeah. years. Yeah. We never re roast it, and it just tastes good. Yeah. And yeah, that's that's the quality of a oolong when we sourcing them. So anyway, there was uh, two interesting teas. Um, yeah, I hope you guys don't mind we're so straight. I'm so mean about the tea. Yeah, uh, I think it's it's a good learning experience, uh, and we're a bit happier because the snow's starting to melt. Finally, right. So continue to send pictures of blossoms, pictures of spring. It helps us. Okay. And uh, I hope you uh, leave questions, comments. Yeah. Um, and don't forget to follow us on social medias. Yeah. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Like, and... subscribe. You know. Right. Do all those things. All right. Down there, everywhere. Okay. Okay. See so you guys see you later. Bye bye. Bye.